If the Insta360 Link made sweet, sweet love to a security camera on a rainy Saturday night, this is what they would conceive. The Sync Camera Genie S, the smallest dual access GPT enabled security camera in the world. This little guy can not only detect movement and start recording it, but it's able to detect more than 2000 types of objects, allowing you to easily search through the video database and find this specific recording. And if that's not cool enough, it's also able to understand what is happening in the video itself and send you a text notification so you can read what it captured. To simply put it, this is a tiny little companion that keeps watch over your home. But the surprising thing here is that it costs only $35. To start off, the setup was extremely easy. You just plug the camera into the wall or a USB-C port to supply power to the camera. And then you download the Sync app and you pair it together. My first impressions with this camera is that it looks very sci-fi, like a minimalistic sci-fi look, which will fit in most interior designs because it doesn't stick out. And also when it's shut off, it kind of just folds into this cute little cube. Aww. The camera shoots in 2K resolution at a nine by 16 aspect ratio, which is specifically designed to fit on your phone screen as well as integrate it with your social media apps. However, there is an option to expand that to three x four, which is just a full screen mode. For an indoor security camera, I would say the recording quality is pretty good during the day. It's sharp and you're able to zoom in quite a bit. Unfortunately, it records only in 20 FPS. So you do get a bit of motion blur, especially when it's tracking someone. The camera also doesn't have night vision, which sucks. I really wanted to use this as a baby cam for Olivia because the one we currently have kind of sucks, but it does have a built-in flashlight that gets extremely bright. We're talking blinding brightness that can light up an entire room. This does come in handy if you're trying to scare off intruders or if you just want to record video in the dark. There is a slider right on the app that lets you manually adjust the strength of the light, which is nice. So on the homepage, you can control the camera manually using the joystick. There is a one second delay, so do keep that in mind as you're moving it around. You can also mount this on a tripod or any other mount that takes a quarter inch thread. The call option turns on the two-way mic and speakers. That way you can interact with whoever is on the other side, just like FaceTiming someone on your phone. The quality certainly isn't the best. Like I wouldn't do any Zoom calls or meetings on this, but it's enough to understand what the person is trying to say on the other end. You also have the option of taking the screenshot and recording the call. All the saved footage is stored right on the camera itself and you can access it in the playback tab on the bottom. It's also worth mentioning that this comes in a 32 gigabyte and a 64 gigabyte version and the price difference is only five bucks, which makes no sense. Why would anyone buy the 32 gigabyte version when you can get double the space for just $5 more? Tapping three circles on the bottom will open up more options like powering off the camera, we got full screen mode and then tracking. Tracking works half the time. Let me put it this way. It's able to track the object or the person as long as that object or person is not moving too fast. I also noticed that when it's tracking a person, the FPS dips dramatically. I'm not sure if this is a software issue or hardware limitations as the processor is probably not able to keep up with multiple tasks. Co-watch is a pretty cool feature. Enabling this will allow you to share the live feed with other people. So for instance, let's say you see your dog doing something funny back at home. Well, you can invite other people to join the live feed and watch it together. You can set the link to expire after five, 10 or 30 minutes. Clicking the settings option will open up another window where you can control how the camera operates and records. You can set a detection parameter and only let the camera record when it detects a person, vehicle, and or a pet. And you can even set a specific zone so that the camera doesn't always trigger for every movement. There's also an option to set a schedule for when the camera is allowed to record and you can set the recording duration between 12 second slices and continuous recording without any cooldown period. Okay, now I wanna talk about the main feature of this camera and the reason why many people would wanna buy it in the first place, the AI. They're calling it View Say. The launch price is 99 cents and this unlocks an entirely new set of AI features which separates this camera from the competition. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the camera can recognize more than 2000 types of objects and it does that in real time while recording and it stores it in the camera, making it easier to find by searching specific keywords. So for example, if I wanna look up videos where only a dog was recorded, I just go into the playback section and I type in dog. And afterwards, it will just show you all the videos where a dog was recorded. Now, this isn't always accurate. Sometimes it's spot on where it's scary 
and in other times it's laughable. Okay, let me give you guys some examples here. Try not to laugh. A woman is standing in a kitchen looking at the oven and smiling. Very bizarre sequence, right? Like why would you stand in the kitchen and look at an oven and smile? So here's my wife walking around in the kitchen. She doesn't even look at the oven. She just grazes by it. She picks up a water bottle, the camera continues to track it and then she stores it in the, the doors. So yeah, very inaccurate. Let's see what happens afterwards. And then she just goes around. Okay, maybe at that point she looked at the oven, but she's definitely not smiling. Another miss. My wife has no idea I was recording her, by the way. I'm sorry if you're watching this video. Okay, here's one. A woman is holding a baby in the kitchen and they are standing in front of a refrigerator. So this one's actually a little accurate. That's my mom holding baby Olivia. They're not standing next to a refrigerator. It's actually stacked ovens, but this is so far the most accurate reading we've gotten. A young girl is listening to music in a living room wearing headphones. So this one was also somewhat accurate. That's baby Shayla. She is listening to nothing, obviously, because the headphones aren't plugging into it. But it's funny how the app is kind of deducing that she's listening to music just because she's got some headphones on, even though you can clearly see it's not connected to anything. I mean, I guess it technically could be wireless headphones. So again, it's, it's deducing that she's listening to music because it's spotted uh, headphones. Young girl is also accurate. She's two years and seven months, so I would consider her a young girl, not a baby. And living room is also accurate. Like it's able to tell what room you are in the house, which I think is pretty impressive. But here's the big takeaway. It will only summarize the first five seconds of the entire video. So the first five seconds is just my daughter putting on a pair of headphones. But the remainder of the video, as you can see here, is me standing in front of the camera, drinking coffee, and talking on my smartphone. So I wanted to see how much of it can, can it actually summarize. But unfortunately, it only summarizes the first five seconds. So whatever it notices the first five seconds, that's what it summarizes. So here it is, exact same scene without my daughter in the picture. A man is standing in a living room holding a remote control and it appears to be adjusting the television. I'm holding my phone, it's not a remote. I've noticed that this app thinks all smartphones are remote. That's something that's very consistent so far. Everything else is accurate. There is a man standing in the living room. Here's another one of my daughter. A young child is playing with a pink toy in a large clean room. That is very specific. The fact that you can zoom in and you can see she does in fact have a pink toy in her hand. It's also able to tell that it's in a large clean room. I do appreciate the compliment on the clean room, by the way. I don't know how it can determine if it's clean or dirty, but that was pretty impressive. Here's another absolute insult to my wife. Again, I apologize if you're watching this video. A man is holding a baby in his arms <laughs> and they're standing in a living room. The living room part is accurate, but that is not a man, that is in fact my wife holding Shayla. A woman is running through a large, clean, and well-lit living room. So now my, now the young child is a woman for some reason. Um, everything else is accurate, large, clean, and well-lit living room. I'm not sure why it can't be consistent with determining if it's a young child or a woman. This one's actually pretty impressive. A little girl is playing with a white stuffed animal in a large, clean room. This one was pretty spot on. Like if you zoom in closely, you can see that Shayla holds is holding a panda. So it's white and black. It's technically a stuffed animal. We're in a large clean room and a little girl is playing with it. So the AI is able to tell based off the smile and maybe her running around that she's playing with something. Okay, this next one is a bit scary. Okay, a woman is feeding a baby in a high chair and the baby is eating a piece of food. This is pretty spot on, but here's the thing. My wife does not show up in this video. You can only see her hands. So I'm guessing the AI assumed her gender based off the bracelets and the color of her nails. That's like the only thing I could think of for it to determine that there is a woman that's actually feeding the baby. You also can't see the chair. So how does it know that she is sitting in a high chair? Interesting. Here's the same exact scene, but this time I'm feeding baby Olivia. A man is feeding a baby a spoonful of food while the baby is sitting in a high chair. Again, spot on. I'm using a spoon, she's sitting in a high chair, and I'm feeding the baby. So now let's say I wanna find a specific video, right? Instead of scrolling through the entire library, 
I can go in the search bar and search for a specific term. So let's say baby in this case. And there you go. All the videos where a baby was tagged will now show up on the page, making it easier to narrow it down and find the video I'm looking for. So yeah, when it works, it's awesome, but when it doesn't, it's laughable. I really do hope they continue to update and polish the app because its current limitations are the software and not the hardware. Either way, I think the price is perfect. If they wanted over a hundred bucks for this thing, it would be a hard pass for me, but for $40, it's not bad. View say we'll need some more tweaking to improve its accuracy, but even without that feature, the $40 price tag is still justified for a standalone 1440p resolution security camera. To simply put it, this is a tiny little companion that keeps watch over your home and it does it with the help of GPT. But when you think about it, this is more than just a security camera. It's really great at capturing daily moments effortlessly. If you guys want to check it out yourself, I'll drop a link to it down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.